our North American neighbors in Mexico just held a presidential election and um, they actually chose somebody who's good, which I feel like every time there's an election around the world, we're always bracing for impact and they choose somebody insane. But they did good in Mexico. They voted for the leftist in this election, Claudia Scheinbaum, who's a climate scientist and the former mayor of Mexico City. And she didn't just win. She won in a landslide. And she's now going to become the first woman and first Jewish president in Mexico's history. And to say that she won in a landslide really undersells it because she won literally every single state in the country. And as the Washington Post points out, the Moreno Party, which is the leftist party that she's a part of, was so popular in this election that they're close to having a supermajority, which would then give them the power to change the Constitution. So she didn't just win. She kicked ass. Her entire party did. Now, what's even more shocking is that this electoral victory comes after six years of leadership from another Moreno party member, AMLO, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, and she is his protege. So the population is confirming that they support leftist policies and they want to continue down this path. Now, as an American, this is really surprising to see because we almost always see blowback to whoever's in charge. For example, after eight years of Bush, we got Obama and then Democrats had a supermajority in the Senate, which they didn't do anything with. Then after eight years of Obama, we then got Trump where Republicans had control of all three branches of government. And the one main thing that they did was pass tax cuts for the rich. So long story short, there's almost always a backlash to the party that's in power. But, you know, in Mexico, that's not necessarily the case. The population overwhelmingly rejected conservatism despite six years of leftist leadership. And this victory is even more surprising when you consider the violent climate that this election took place in, where political assassinations have largely been blamed on AMLO. For example, NBC News reports that the historic nature of this race has been overshadowed by violence, and they quote Tony Payan of the Center for U.S. and Mexico, who says, ever since Mr. Lopez Obrador took office at the end of 2018, that discourse has completely shifted these criminals feel that they can do almost anything they want to and the state will not go after them so he's referring to amlo's approach to crime and amlo has chosen to not go directly after cartel leaders now what payan is saying here sounds pretty similar to the arguments that right-wingers use against progressive DAs here in cities in the United States. You know, they'll say crime's out of control because they don't prosecute criminals anymore and people can commit crimes with impunity. I'm sure you've all heard the arguments. And it's true that crime is an issue in Mexico, as is cartel violence. But the article also admits that the policy of AMLO's predecessors, where they go to war with cartel leaders, also didn't reduce crime or violence. Now, since the data disproves the efficacy of this tough on cartel approach, there was this media campaign instead that tried to insinuate that AMLO wasn't going after cartel leaders because he was in bed with them. And, you know, to oversimplify things, the way that Mexicans responded to this is they said, we don't buy the bullshit. They know that Mexican presidents can't control U.S. drug laws that empower drug lords. So huffing and puffing about how tough on cartels they are isn't going to make that much of a difference. Maybe it makes upper class people feel better, but in actuality, it doesn't really do anything meaningfully, right? Now, Scheinbaum's main opponent, Zotichel Galvez, and I'm probably mispronouncing their name, but their message was basically, hey, the economy is bad and things aren't getting better because crime and voters overwhelmingly did not buy it. They rejected that message, which would have been very persuasive if that campaign was run here in the United States, right? Now, much like American conservatives, David Adler of Progressive International is reporting that Mexico's right is already doing what Trump and Bolsonaro did by raising doubts about the election, which is, I guess, just the thing that right-wingers do when they lose now. But let's talk more about Scheinbaum and how she won, because there's some lessons that I think American politicians and politicians around the world, frankly, can learn. Jacobin reports, where Galvez veered from one uncosted policy proposal to another, Scheinbaum rolled out a hundred point program that includes extending social programs and scholarships, continuing annual minimum wage increases, consolidating Mexico's push towards national health care, building a million affordable homes on a rent to buy plan, constructing seven long distance train lines, avoiding the maquilador experience of the 1990s by mandating that companies investing in the near shoring phenomenon provide higher wages and benefits and in what is certain to continue raising the shackles of multinational energy interests, a public sector-led energy transition building on Mexico's state-owned oil, electricity, and lithium companies. In other words, she just ran a populist campaign and stayed focused on the issues 
and she won. Now, there was this attempt to portray her as a puppet of Amlo and that she was there to just do his bidding and give him another turn. But that strategy was a miscalculation by the right because they expected the public to be against Amlo and have this backlash to him since he was in power for six years. But, you know, even though he wasn't perfect, he still did things that helped people. Yes, he did do austerity as well. But for the most part, he also did a lot of things that helped working Mexicans and they felt it. Common Dreams reports AMLO has done a little better for people than prior governments, and Scheinbaum has pledged to continue his political approach, though with a greater emphasis on sustainability. Tamara Pearson, a Mexican-Australian author, journalist, and activist, wrote for The Nation ahead of Sunday's race. The pension for informal workers has increased to 6,000 pesos, that's $359, every two months. The health system for informal workers, which includes most Mexicans, is still extremely lacking, but has improved. So those material differences helped to drive the popularity of AMLO and the Moreno party. And on top of that, the party has been good with regard to foreign policy. As Ryan Grimm points out via Twitter, Mexico joined South Africa's genocide case against Israel at the ICJ, and Scheinbaum is expected to continue his pro-Palestinian position. And even though she hasn't said much about Israel-Palestine on the campaign trail, which is disappointing, still, she's been a long-time pro-Palestinian Jewish woman. In fact, in 2009, she penned a letter to the editor of a newspaper in Mexico City where she condemned Israel's violence, writing, no reason justifies the murder of Palestinian civilians. Civilians. Nothing, nothing, nothing can justify the murder of a child. So she's been a longtime leftist, and Mexicans just confirmed that this is what they want. They want more of AMLO's type of policies. Now, that's not to say that she's perfect or that everything that AMLO did was peachy keen, because as I said, he did do austerity, and there's other reasons why leftists in Mexico criticized him and the Moreno party. For example, Common Dreams explains, the outgoing president has also faced backlash for pursuing fossil fuel infrastructure projects that risk damaging indigenous communities and the planet. Manga Bay's Maxwell Radwin noted last week that Scheinbaum, who contributed to a major intergovernmental panel on climate change report, continues to support one of AMLO's most polarizing projects, the Tren Maya, a 966-mile railroad crossing the Yucatan Peninsula. Despite dozens of legal complaints about deforestation, the destruction of cave ecosystems, and the relocation of indigenous communities, Radwin observed, she's defended the project and even suggested expanding it to a major port in the town of Progreso in northwest Yucatan. So, yeah, there is a leftist critique of Scheinbaum and AMLO and the Moreno Party, and that's because there's just no such thing as the perfect politician or perfect political party. I think that goes without saying. But still, you know, what she's doing is running on a populist platform. And she's also proposing billions of dollars in investments towards renewable technology, which kind of sounds like a Mexican Green New Deal if you read the uh, details, which is what people want. They want to see those kinds of policies. They care about climate change. But in the end, you know, Mexicans made the right choice, and I'm really proud of them, and I'm excited to see what she does when she takes office in October. But in conclusion, you know, when you run as a leftist and you propose popular policies and you actually do popular things that really improve people's lives— this kind of shows that voters are going to reward you for it. Now, Mexico's political system is different than ours, but nevertheless, there's still an important lesson to be learned here from Democrats. Be better. Do popular things. Deliver for your base in a material way. And they will come out and reward you for it. Always make sure that your base is satisfied. That's the ultimate takeaway from this.